their cavity quantum electrodynamics. It's a little it's, bit it's, different from the official. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's my fault. So thank you. Thank you, Giuseppe. Also, thank you, uh, Adriano and uh, Pierre, for organizing this. Uh, I really find it very useful and informative. So thanks for taking all the pain. So I'll just start with my presentation. This is the work done in collaboration with um, Rebecca Krauss, Simon Yeager, Giovanna Morici from uh, uh, Saarbrücken, and also with Tomasa Rochilde from uh, Lyon. Uh, so the idea of this problem comes from this experimental setup. And uh, what happens here is you have a two-dimensional optical lattice, a Bose-Hubbard model, and you insert it between two mirrors, which is a cavity setup. And if you pump this setup transversely with a laser, the photons from the, from the laser can bounce off the atom into one of the cavity modes, which gives you another wavelength in the system. So you already have a wavelength lambda naught because of the, of the optical lattice that you have, the bose hubbard model. And on top of that, because of this cavity with the standing wave, you have another mode which gives you a wavelength lambda. And the competition between this lambda and lambda naught, as I'll show in the next slides, will give you new phases in the system. So what happens in this whole scenario of, uh, of uh, having your optical lattice and then another lattice on top of it because of the, of the cavity interaction, in a specific limit of time called adiabatic elimination of the cavity, you can write your long range Hamiltonian in terms of three different paths. The first part is the bose hubbard Hamiltonian, which will stay even without this cavity setup. The second part is the, is the laser term, which is just a potential shift because of, because of the transverse laser that you're applying. And the third part is edge cavity, which is the long range potential mediated by the cavity photons interacting with the atom. So atom photon interaction leads to this long range part edge cavity here. Now, the setup looks much more clear here in this, in this, uh, in this figure on the left-hand side topmost corner. And different colors I will now use to, to represent different parts of the Hamiltonian. So HPH I show in red, which are these red dots with wavelength lambda naught. Uh, gray H laser would be the Hamiltonian of the laser and blue will, would be the cavity, ca the cavity part. So the red Hamiltonian, HPH, is the bose hubbard Hamiltonian, which most of you already know. I'll just go through it still. Uh, the first part here shows the hopping when atoms can hop from one side to the other. I now show it with the strength J, but actually this, I mean, I write it as the strength T. So just consider they can hop from one side to the other with strength T, with tunneling T. Uh, when they lie on top of each other, they pay an energy cost uh, given by U. And mu is the chemical potential. So it takes care of the number of, uh, number of uh, atoms in the system. H laser is this gray part here, which is this transverse field uh, that you are applying. Uh, and this is just a potential term, which is just this modulation given by cos square kx. Uh, Wi's are the vanier functions for the site i. Uh, and H cavity, the blue part, you can also see that this is a modulation but then because of this n term here, this is a modulation in the, in the number of atoms that you have. So it's kind of a density modulation that you have in the system because of this, this cavity. So you'll have a profile of how your atoms will arrange because of this, uh, this cavity photon interaction. And together this Hamiltonian take this form, HLRI. Now these cos Kz and cos Kx, as I told you, will depend on this lambda lambda naught and lambda. And what happens is these terms take a form as a ratio of lambda naught by lambda. So you can have two different scenarios. One where the ratio is, uh, is, uh, is an integer and you will see that in cases where, for example, this green line where it is an odd integer, you will see that the potential, uh, potential goes from plus one to minus one on alternate sides so that it's more like a checkerboard pattern from, because of this potential. Whereas in the case where the, the, wavelength, uh, the ratio of the two wavelengths is slightly shifted from, uh, from an integer number, you'll have a quasi-periodic potential and the, and the profile or the envelope of the potential is given by this, this red, uh, red curve here. 
Also, I'm reminding you again, if you have any questions, just stop me and ask, even if I cannot see the question answer session, just like anyone from the, from the panelists stop me and ask questions. So as, uh, so as speaking of Shraddha, I have a very short question. Yes. If that's okay. Sure. What, which of the two terms give the red envelope? Ah, okay, so it's actually so it when you take this, uh, yeah, yeah. So when you take this to be like slightly shifted from this, you substitute it here and then solve it, and then you will see that that the red envelope is this uh, cos two pi i x by i p, where i x i p depends on now the the part calculated because of this ratio. So you see the the red envelope is this. Uh, this term that it appears here. I see, I see. So IX are actually the site index. So on, so you will see that as site changes, it has like, no, I mean, an, an envelope of checkerboard pattern. So you have like, uh, so you have potential going from plus one to minus one, but in this profile of this modulation. I see, thank you. Okay, so I mean, these two are, uh, are an interesting topic on its own, but I will just concentrate on the common street lattice part where because of this long range potential uh, being, uh, being, so because of this ratio being an, an odd integer, we will have a checkerboard pattern which leads to phases like charge density wave and super solid. On, uh, and also we have phases like mod insulated and superfluid, which would have been there even without the, the laser part. So, so, I mean, this is, these are the phases that you obtain in the bose hubbard Hamiltonian. And because of this, uh, this uh, modulated, uh, modulated long range potential, you also have charge density wave and super solid phases. The Hamiltonian now takes a much cleaner form because the laser part just provides a potential which you can add up here in the, in the cavity term and doesn't really affect much. So now you have a bose hubbard Hamiltonian and this cavity part, which because of the ratio being, uh, being an odd integer takes the form of minus one to the power i. Uh, experimentally, you can obtain this parameter here uh, by looking at the cavity output photon number. And therefore, this long range part of the Hamiltonian is shown in green here, which is ju just the difference between the occupation of the even and odd sites. Now, just to give you a visualization of how these phases arise, the, the red term, the red underlined term here is just the tunneling part, which gives you the superfluid phase if, it's, if, it's, uh, if it overcomes all the other terms of the Hamiltonian. The blue part here is, is the one that provides you just the mod insulator phase where all the particles are stuck to the minima or maxima of your potential. We'll consider it to be minima. Uh, and then you have the, the, uh, the, the long range part with the, with the U naught term of the Hamiltonian, you can get a charge density wave where you have a one zero one zero or like, or Two zero are occupations like this, where uh, where you have an imbalance between the the occupation in even and odd sites. There can be another phase where the long range term and the hopping plays a part, which we will refer to as a super solid, where you have a long range coherence in the system, but it's also modulated, and there is an Im imbalance between an even odd uh, even odd occupation. Uh, we will look at the mean field analysis uh, of the system, and then we will also compare the mean field results with the with the quantum Monte Carlo. But just to begin with, it's since it's a long range system, uh, mean field should work very well. So we will also verify that. Um, to, to so as you can see that in this Hamiltonian, the Ni terms are can actually be written in the occupation number basis as the diagonal terms. But because of this long range interaction and because of this hopping, you have a much, much higher terms than just the quadratic part in your system. So we will decouple these two terms. Uh, the red term here would give you a superfluid order parameter, which is just the, just the average occupation of the annihilation operator. And the green part here would give you an order parameter, which we'll refer to as the imbalance order parameter. This tells you about the, the, the cavity effect being present in the system or not. 
and therefore keeping with uh, or applying this mean field you have a hamiltonian which is now site dependent and you will see that uh, that it just has two terms in it for the even sites you can solve it and for the odd sites you can solve it separately so as to get, get your result what happens to these two parameters in different phases is in mott insulated you do not have cavity effect and you do not have the superfluid order parameter so these two parameters should be zero in superfluid uh, phase you have a uh, long range coherence in the system and therefore this phi i term is non zero but then it can exist even without the long range interaction so theta is zero in charge density wave you have phi zero because you have a, a modulated fixed insulator pattern but your theta is non zero because this is the term because of which you have this modulation and in superfluid phase both of them are non zero so this is how you identify different phases we choose two different values of the long range interaction 0.3 and 0.6 uh, 0.3 being the left panel and you will see that uh, for ul being 0.3 uh, the so the, the the topmost figure is the is the plot of the superfluid order parameter phi and you will see that the superfluid order parameter is non zero very clearly in the insulating phases like charge density wave and mott insulated but it's also non zero in a very small peak here which is which we would refer to as the super solid phase uh, theta is the cavity output which is non zero in the charge density wave phase and also in the super solid phase so this is how we know by looking at these two that this is the super solid phase and the same for the ul is equal to 0.6 if you need more details about the mean field and this work uh, it is in this paper by lucas himbert now to verify the validity of the mean field results uh, we compare our results with the quantum monte carlo results by flotat et al and we see whenever there are long range phases the phases because of the of the long range interaction our results match qualitatively very well with the with the uh, with the quantum monte carlo results uh, some transition boundaries may change at higher densities but that is also because in that case you also have the phases because of the short range interaction which are super solid and uh, mott insulated which does not even have the effect of the long range part and therefore mean field is not really the perfect or like the best way to compare with quantum monte carlo results in that case uh, but in this case where you have just mainly the phases that we are trying to compare charge density wave and the super solid or super fluid so super fluid phase we can see that our boundaries matches quite well with theirs we also find a phase separation region ps here uh this is the region where, where for this special density you do not find any solution for them it, it's like is the sampling problem that they do not really identify these two phases very clearly so once we have matched our mean field results we ask the question what we can do extra to really look at the behavior of entanglement entropy in these phases and mainly to ask about their scaling or what we can say more about their their excitation spectrum or kind of behavior that these these different phases would have uh because mean field theory uh, is actually just like for us defined for a single site we add higher order of correlations in it by just like by doing this small procedure named slave boson approach which is mainly taken from this prl paper here but there are like many papers already um, already using this approach so the idea is you have uh, the the solution from the mean field hamiltonian for each site which would act as a new basis where uh, psi alpha where alpha goes from 0 to n max n max being the the number of the occupation of the local hilbert space and using this psi alpha you write your original hamiltonian rotated in this mean field basis now now what you see that there are higher order terms in this gamma operator here which is the the operator obtained by by having the by having to write the write the 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 occupation number basis in the in the mean field basis and you just expand about these gammas and truncate up to the quadratic order so you expand about the mean field ground state and truncate up to the quadratic order so as to obtain a quadratic hamiltonian 
Once this happens, you can have a quadratic Hamiltonian, which is much cleaner to look at. And also the correlation would consist of only one body correlations, CI dagger CJ and CI CJ, in terms of which you can write your correlation matrix for the specific um, subsystem that you're looking at, whose eigenvalues would give you the entanglement entropy. With this information, we look at the, the, the entanglement entropy for whole, for, for, for whole range of uh, mu versus T, both rescaled by short range interaction U naught for two long range interaction terms, UL being 0.3 and 0.6. We also consist uh, torus geometry where uh, usually we take this subsystem A to be half of this, uh, this torus, but uh, this is just to show that we can just like change it. Uh, with this in mind, if I look at the, the results for UL is equal to 0.3, that I see that uh, we see that for a fixed density, if one starts inside a charge density wave phase or an insulating phase and go to, uh, to, uh, to a super, uh, to a long range interacting, uh, a long range coherent phase. So for example, for rho is equal to 0.5, we start in charge density wave and end at superfluid phase. And there is no quenching here. We are just changing Z and looking at the, the, the value of the entanglement entropy. We see that entanglement entropy would always show a peak just at, uh, at the transition from incompressible phase to a compressible phase, which is, which is also there for the, for the Mott insulator and was like first uh, shown for the Mott insulator case in this paper by, by Fred Roth and Rochelle Day. Uh, we also see the same effect for, for different densities. So being fractional density or, the, or, uh, or, uh, or an integer density. Uh, the same is obtained for UL is equal to 0.6. Uh, it is much easier to see it for rho is equal to one uh, rather than rho is equal to 0.5 because there is a long phase separation phase in between. So we cannot say much about this phase. Um, so, so we always see that entanglement entropy does not really tell you much about the transition from the, from the super solid to super fluid phase, but it would always show a peak at the transition from an incompressible phase to a compressible phase. And we, and also we see that this, this uh, peak happens at the fixed density, but if I define two points, say for example, B is equal to 0.5, being at the fixed density and E is equal to 0 0.5, away from this, uh, this fixed density point, we see that uh, the, the, this peak goes away because this lies mainly in the, in the, in the, in the excitation spectrum of, of, uh, of, your, um, of your system at these two points. So for B is equal to 0.5, you can look at the, the ground and the excited state going linear, near, sorry, linearly to zero, close to Kx, Ky is equal to zero. So these are the plots of the excitation spectrum for, uh, for Kx zero plotted with respect to Ky at this uh, point B0.5. And you see that both the ground and the first excited state goes linearly to zero. Whereas for E is equal to uh, 0 0.5, slightly away from the fixed density, the ground state goes, uh, goes not linearly, but rather quadratically to zero. And there is a gap between the ground and excited state. So this, when you try to extract the, the um, entanglement spectrum from your, from, your, uh, from your correlation matrix, you will see that the spectrum also has a different behavior and actually kind of same as compared to the, to the physical spectrum. And this tells us the, the, the reason that the constant density phase transition at tips are actually the special point because you have a different uh, critical exponent, Z being one at this point. And therefore these two points belong to different universality class and we have a different behavior of entanglement entropy for these two points here. Uh, also, the... Uh, sorry, yes. uh, Shrada. Yes. But so as far as I understood from the dispersion relation between the ground state energy and the first excited state energy, um, at the tip, you have a second order phase transition point and uh, so a critical point, whereas all the, the rest of the phase transition seems to be first order. No, no. So no? I, no, actually, so E is equal to 0.5 is the second order phase transition. It's also 
the first order phase transition, you're right, exists in these systems, but that would be actually like very close to this boundary here. So uh, actually, this is a very good point. So in this system, it's really like very weird that if you go directly from this charge density wave to super solid phase, super fluid phase here, rather than, so for example, here you can see very clearly. So if you go from charge density wave to super fluid to super solid, they, this would be a second order phase transition. But if you directly go from charge density wave to super fluid phase here, you will see a first order phase transition. Okay. So, uh, I mean, so this point actually is kind of here and this is a second order phase transition point. But, but then how come that there is no gap closing in uh, E0.5? Uh, so see, so, I mean, this is because I'm taking a very, very shitty system size. I mean, there is, so you can also say it from here that it's not very clearly a gap closing here also. There is always okay. a finite gap, but then that is because I'm taking like 20 cross 20 or 10 cross 10 system. And actually these can be done for two cross two very well because you know the mean field is just an even, I mean, we do a mean field for just even outside. I can just do it for a two cross two system, but then you know you will not have this behavior with kx, ky. So it's- uh, but, but so what you're saying is that- if is just the numerical artifact that I'm not doing it like very well. Okay, so what you're saying, if I understood well, is that if you were to take a, a bigger system and really go on the phase transition line for E yes. uh, 0 0.5, you will have a gap closing at uh, K equal minus pi over two and pi over two. Yes, yes. Ah, okay. no. So here, no? I don't know, but uh, definitely at KX, KY is equal to zero. Uh, why do you say that it should be ah, but uh, at minus pi over two and pi over two? The, the blue curve is not the ground state energy, it's the first excited state energy. No, blue is the ground state energy and red is the first excited state energy. But why should a gap close here? But um, a gap uh, is the uh, energy between the ground state uh, energy and the first excited state energy. Um, ah, okay, you're saying because it is at the transition line. So at the, uh, at the end of the, so let me just think, if I open this Brillouin zone, for example, for the, for, the, for the MOT insulator and the superfluid transition, you would see the same behavior uh, away from the tip, for example, at point D1. And here I've just like, uh, like because of the even order symmetry folded the Brillouin zone. Now I have to think why should this gap go to zero at this, this uh, So I, maybe, I mean, maybe I not at this point. point maybe. Is KX, KY is equal to zero, but the gap between, so this is the point. At this point, the, so if, you, if I would tell you the critical exponent, that would be how the, how the gap opens. And here the gap, if I'm, if I'm understanding correctly, would be the gap between this E and minus E here. So as you ah, move away a... from this point, you will see the gap opens as Z, uh, as uh, K to the power two. So Z is two. And in this case, uh, there is also a minus E here. And so it's more like, uh, you see that, uh, so I think, it's more like this that the that the Goldstone mode and the Higgs mode both go to zero at this point, and here this does not happen. Okay. But uh, so, the so gap the is actually, yeah, yeah, the sorry. blue curve is actually the 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 lowest unoccupied band. Yes. Ah, okay. 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 Sorry, yeah, I missed. Sorry, uh, I wasn't very clear I when not, I uh, said the ground and the first excited state here. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sorry, I also have a question if yes. I can. Um, this model that you are considering uh, at finite interaction, um, as far as I know, has an exact solution when uh, you take a strong repulsion limit because it's reduced to an XX chain with anti ferromagnetic uh, infinite order chain, you know? Uh, yeah, so interaction. You're saying if I take uh, UL to be very yeah. large. Because no, the boson of our part. Sign uh, here, right? So I always say that when I take UL to be very large, this is unstable. No, UL, because, uh, uh, U0, the, 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 repul the on site repulsion. Yes, that, that Basically, is it becomes an XX chain right. plus an infinite uh, long range uh, anti ferromagnetic coupling, which is exactly solvable. Uh, Reducing the the space of modes into two sector. Yeah, yeah okay. this can be done. 
Yeah, and I was uh, asking, I was uh, wondering whether you compared your funding uh, with the, in the limit, I mean, if you reproduced the correctly the limit of uh, strong uh, repulsive interactions. Actually, this is a very good point, point, and I should look at it, but I did not check it. We actually just checked, I mean, I just checked okay, okay. if I put UL is equal to zero, I, I match all the results with the bose suburban model. But I never checked this. This would be actually... Yeah, there is a paper to... of uh, Igloy. I don't remember the year. It's on PRB, probably 2018, something actually, like that. I will write you a mail afterwards to... Yeah, sure. And, and also in that paper, coming back to the question of Pierre, there is also... Uh, they made a number, the Stratonovich transformation, so that they, could, they, they were able to characterize the phase diagram of the model. So there you can find all the transition line, okay? Okay. And, okay, maybe it's not the same at finite interaction, but I guess so. It's just a bit deformed, I guess. But uh, yes, I mean, I would believe so, yes. Okay, thank you. But uh, this is a good point. Thank you. I will get more information on this. Uh, okay, I mean, just to say that these two points, I mean, this is true that uh, I haven't found this point E explicitly uh, by by solving this equation, I just numerically found this point where the, the, the curve was changing, the excitation spectrum was changing deep in charge density wave and uh, in superfluid phase. But you can actually find these blue lines analytically by doing a perturbation over T. And these blue longitudinal lines between different phases can be found very exactly by, because you know you start from here by putting T is equal to zero and then you extend these lines uh, for, a, for a fixed density transition. So I will check this, I will do it much better, but like this being non-zero is just a numerical artifact. Uh, with this in mind, there is also another interesting thing happening here because of the, the, the long range or the infinite range interaction here, uh, the k is equal to zero mode plays a very important role here. And you will see that, uh, that for, for points uh, in the super, super fluid phase, C0.5 or in the super, uh, sorry, in the super solid phase, C0.5 or in the super fluid phase, B0.5, you will see that if I plot for kx is equal to zero, uh, ky ranging from minus pi by two to pi by two, you will always see that there is a mode softening uh, for k k for the for the for the higher energy at ky is equal to zero. So for kx ky is equal to zero, there will be a mode softening, and this is solely because of the infinite range interaction here. And if I compare the 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 uh, energies plot here or the energy spectrum here you will always find a, a roton mode at the super solid superfluid transition at the, at the transition of, uh, of this long range, long range uh, phase. And this has been seen experimentally also. Uh, but like sadly this one mode, and this is a good point Pierre, you know, this point should also actually go to zero. I asked to the, for the other group who does it, but they do it like explicitly for a two cross two system to look at how the ground and the excited state go. Um, so, I mean, our main point is to see how the entanglement entropy or if at all, this would show a slight peak for just mode softening of this one mode. And at this point, I cannot comment much on this, but if I look at the entanglement spectrum and how different modes contribute, I see that the entanglement spectrum wouldn't change much when you go from a super solid phase to a super fluid phase. So in my opinion, this does not really show a peak for a finite size system. Maybe when you go to a thermodynamic limit explicitly, you might see, see a special point here where you can see maybe a non-analytic behavior between, I mean, a peak between a super solid and super fluid phase. Uh, just to say, uh, comment more about the physical spectrum. There are more interesting things happening when UL is uh, greater than 0.5. So we take UL is, is equal to 0 0.6. And the main idea of doing it is because, uh, because you can see from this, uh, this uh, figure here that the super solid phases are so large that you also see a transition between different super solid phases here. And uh, we, so in the, in the top, left left uh, corner 
we plot the excitation spectrum. So this red and blue curve is actually the excitation spectrum for uh, kx is equal to zero and ky is equal to pi. And we see strange points A and B here. And if we actually now trace back it to the phase diagram, these A and B points actually lie at the transition from, so A point lies at the transition from one kind of super solid to the other kind of super solid. And B points lies close to a triple point. And uh, we can, so I mean, this I have been found experimentally someone saying, but then we can say that if you really want to probe a transition between uh, two kinds of super solid, you can actually look at the, 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 uh, the gap between the higher excitations going to zero at ky is equal to pi by two. So, I mean, this is just to say that, uh, that you can also probe different kind of critical points, for example, the triple point by looking at the gap going to zero at pi by two, and you can also obtain a data cone kind of like, like structure here. Uh, we also, I will very shortly comment on the metastable states and include like uh, just the, just not the static effect, but uh, a quenching kind of effect. And the idea is these systems are like, um, are so complicated that there are many meta metastable states uh, in, the, in the compressible phases, uh, incompressible phases here. And if you quench from, so for example, even within the, the Mott insulator phase, if I quench my parameters, I will see that I might end up in, a, in, a, in another charge density wave phase. And here we compare our results with that of the, the results from this experiment where this whole uh, idea started from. So in this case, they actually take, so here they very clearly show the phase diagram between the detuning and the depth of the lattice. And the detuning is related to the long range. So detuning and depth both are actually related to the long range interaction terms. And the depth would also tell you the, about the, the interaction part because you can increase or reduce the depth to see the hopping and reduce the short range interaction. So the, uh, so the idea is they have the whole phase diagram fixed to, to, the, to this density is equal to one. And they see that, uh, that uh, this slanted region here is the, is the uh, so in their experiment, they see that this is kind of, a, of an overlap or a coexistence of a charge density wave and a Mott insulator phase. Because whenever they start from somewhere close to the Mott insulator phase and quench inside the charge density wave phase, they see that they need, I mean, this makes sense that they need more potential to really overcome these two incompressible phases so that at the end when they come back or they try to come back to the mod insulator phase, they always see kind of a hysteresis behavior. So, so I just explained these. So this SS is the super solid phase. This is the charge density wave phase, mod insulator and superfluid. This is the coexistence region. And in the plot just below it, they show a behavior where the star is the starting point. They start from some point of the detuning uh, and then they, they change their, uh, their field, reduce it and increase it so that they, they, for example, start from here, go inside and come back. And then they always see a hysteri hysteresis behavior, which is because of this potential that I said that you need to increase uh, much larger than some potential so that you can, you can maybe come back to your original state. And if we plot the, uh, if we plot the metastable states in between the, our, uh, our phase diagram, uh, comparing again, UL is equal to 0.3 and 0.6 and keeping fixed to this N is equal to one region or uh, the occupation of N is equal to one. We also see that even if I start from say some point in this slope in Mott insulator ground state phase diagram, and I quench my long range interaction to UL is equal to 0.6 to this point. And if I come back, I can end up in some, some, uh, some charge density wave phases that we found find inside this Mott insulator, uh, Mott insulator mode. And this paper is really interesting. There are many, many more states that you can find, which are these like uh, this orange and red region where you can also get trapped. So in that case, we match our results very well with the, with the experimental finding also. 
with this uh, with this mean field and doing an expansion on top of this mean field solution. Uh, we also look at the scaling of entanglement entropy at different phases, just to see how entanglement entropy would behave mainly in this long range phase, the, the super solid phase. And we again take UL is equal to 0.3, fixed density 0.5. Uh, this is the form of the scaling that we, that we take for the entanglement entropy. Uh, the first part is actually the, the uh, area law term. The second part is the volume law, uh, sorry, the second part is the log correction. The third part is volume law in case we obtain it and then some constant. And we see in the charge density wave in both the cases, uh, there is just the, the, this uh, constant. So we take D is equal to two, it's always a two dimensional system. There is always this area law term and uh, no log contribution or, uh, or obviously volume law as expected. In the superfluid phase also this happens that there is a log correction on top of the area law, but then we do not find any volume law, which, uh, which I don't know was expected or not. So it was good to see how this would behave. Uh, we see the same and in the superfluid phase, again, we obtain uh, an area law and a log correction. So the log scaling was, uh, was kind of expected for the superfluid and super solid phase, but we did not know if there was a volume law scaling at, uh, at this like static level or just at the level of this long range interaction of the superfluid phase. Uh, so to conclude, uh, we have used the slave boson mean field approach to probe entanglement entropy of a long range post suburban model with uh, phases like charge density wave, super solid, mod insulator and superfluid. Entanglement entropy shows a peak at the fixed density in compressible to compressible phase transition. Uh, but this fixed density may or may not be an integer. It actually depends on the, on the excitation spectrum. And there are these special points, uh, which belongs to a special universality class, which gives rise to this, uh, this peak in entanglement entropy. Um, fixed density in incompressible phases have an additional log dependent scaling and we observe area law scaling for uh, area law scaling with a log correction in the super solid phase uh, we also have some results for the incommensurate lattice case uh, if we have time and you guys are interested i can i can talk about it but then it's also interesting to look at this uh, this incommensurate lattice case uh, these are the people who worked on this Lucas is the his master thesis was was to look at this uh, main field phase diagram and we actually did this uh, metastable stability work with him. Uh, Simon, Rebecca, and uh, Giovanna and Tommaso are are the other authors in this paper. With this, I thank you and uh, questions. Thank you very much, Shada for this nice talk are there questions comments um sorry if i can ask something in the slide where you showed that your model has a super solid super solid transition what is the difference between the two i suppose the crystalline structure uh sorry which but transition? i just wanted to be super sure solid yeah this to one this one uh, uh to super, no, the super solid to super solid one that you mentioned at some point. Uh, I think it's ah, a slide before. Ah, yes, yes, it's because of the occupation. So you see, this is the super solid of one zero. So you will have a kind of a, so how do I explain it? So if you look at this density profile, you know, you can uh, have okay, this uh, modulation uh, I think even I see. As, so it, it's the same crystalline structure. Oh, sorry, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, no. So you're actually uh, absolutely right. It's the same crystalline structure as one zero or two zero, but then there is a higher um, uh, or the the higher probability of uh, of even side being occupied with respect to the odd side. So, for example, here we can have an occupation like zero point eight, uh, zero point one point two, and here you can have an occupation like uh, one point eight and uh, 0.2 something like this so you will have a different modulation because this is on top of this charge density wave which is two zero so you will see a slight modulation from this two zero here in this phase 
uh, also you can differentiate this so, phase very well by looking at this value so of crystal, theta. Yes. So, so the crystal is structure right? is the same. It's it's just that the occupation of the sites and the structure are different. Yes. Yes. Essentially. Exactly. Mm, okay. So in this case, even okay, site thanks. is again preferred than the odd site, and the the odd site is actually more close to zero. So the crystalline structure, yes, is same. The occupation differs. Okay, thank you. So if people don't ask questions, I'll start presenting other results for the incommensurate lattice case. So I, I would like to, to to ask you a question. So yes. just the point that I that I'm sure you mentioned, but I might have misunderstood. So when you move mu here, like for example in 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 some of these um, in some of these graphs, do you also move the feeling, or is it just the amplitude of the chemical potential? Yes. Yeah, so if I move, so for example for a fixed T, if I move mu here, the feeling would change. Okay, but so it means the, that the the feeling seems to change continuously. No, Meaning no, that it you have change continuously. Sorry. No. Uh, why do you say it would change continuously? Because from going from one zero to two zero, this would be a first order phase transition, and filling would also change uh, discontinuously, right? I mean, you suddenly, rather than filling one. Because zero, we have a gapped phase, of course. Zero. Yes. Because yes. we have a gapped yes. phase, so so you. Either you have a full band that is empty and then suddenly fully full, but yes. there is, you don't you don't consider the in between case. Yeah, okay, okay. No, no, good. This was the correct way to put it. Yes, because I see. you're I see. and actually the transition between one kind of super solid to the other would also be a first order phase transition, especially close to the boundary of this charge density wave to super solid transition. Mainly here, it becomes okay. second order close to the superfluid phase. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Close to these kind of. But so now, if you were to change not the chemical potential continuously, but the feeling continuously, then you will have some of these commensurate results and all of the incommensurate results in between, I guess. Uh, no. So in this case, you will not have incommensurate results. To have incommensurate results, you will have to have uh, this kind of potential. And therefore, the Hamiltonian would have all the terms here, actually. So to have uh, the incommensurate, I mean, in this case, or with this Hamiltonian, you will not have uh, incommensurate results. No, because you can always, since uh, since U1 is, uh, is conserved in your model, you can always put the amount of particle that you want that can be incommensurate in your system. And then you will not have a, a commensurate phase. But maybe this is not the incommensurate case that uh, that you studied. Maybe it is another case of in, another case of uh, incommensurateness. Actually, okay. you will have to repeat it again. I so I'm sorry. I no no no. It's uh, I mean, if you were to put uh, an incommensurate number of particle in in mm -hmm. your uh, in in this model, okay, so. With a uh, with a uh, well. Uh... Okay, I understand you're right. So, for example, close to this boundary, uh, more insulated boundary, you'll have some density like 0 0.9, 0 0.98. So, I mean that you can say that there are incommensurate. Okay, mm -hmm. you're right. Yeah, because the SF is uh, right. is a um, gapless, and so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. And you're so right. the the feeling also vary continuously as you vary the chemical yes. potential. Yes. Okay, everything is very clear. Okay. Thank you Sorry, very much. I confused you in the first part. You're you're right. There would be incommensurate filling no, no uh, close to these boundaries, especially. Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. I think there is uh, another question by Andre to raise uh, his hand. Please. Oh, so yeah. the okay. the term entropy is maximal at uh, the phase transition point between compressible and compressible phases. Yes. And in my understanding, it has nothing to do with the order of the phase transition. I'm mm -hmm. just wondering how general this result is. Um, uh, so I think whenever, I mean, this is this also proves this, that whenever you go from, uh, from a phase which is incompressible 
to a compressible phase. It does not depend what kind of uh, structuring that you have in the previous phase or the other phase, but whenever you go from an incompressible phase to compressible phase, you will see this kind of peak behavior. But that filling should be, should be uh, so for example, in the case of the Bose glass uh, phase or in the case where you, we do a transition for density, say 0 0.7 uh, for the incommensurate lattice, we do not see this behavior. So this happens at uh, fixed density one, fixed density 0 0.5, 1.5, so on and so forth. But for 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 uh, the incommensurate lattice case, uh, where you try, you go from say Bose glass phase to uh, to a super superfluid phase, going across a, a a super glass phase at a fixed density 0 0.7, you will not see a transition from Bose glass to super glass, but rather see a transition at super glass to superfluid. So. In that case, I would say that it's, uh, I mean, I mean, this is not really the, the general case, general case. So I, I so, okay, just to summarize, uh, this would happen whenever you, you have a, have a fixed density transition for densities that are, uh, that are commensurately changing from, from incompressible to, com to compressible phase. Now, um, okay. So, mm -hmm. to answer your question, it's not really the, the best way to explain if it is a general, um, general scenario. For this. Okay. So, I mean, you'll have to see in some systems. Mm -hmm. but, uh, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Without introducing both glass phases, this might have been a very, very uh, confusing answer. But uh, in cases where you have uh, integer filling like this and non-integer filling like this, this would definitely always happen. In special cases, this might not happen, yes. Thank you. Other questions, comment? Uh, just, I mean, I, I mean, these results are for what system size? Like, does it depend on system size or like? Uh, I think this might have this, this, uh, so this peak behavior and this will not depend on system size. We also see the scaling, how this would go with the system size, but uh, but I am expecting somehow, I mean, I have a feeling that when this gap would go to zero, because of this K is equal to zero mode, there might have some special feature happening at super solid super fluid transition. So you might see a peak here. So in some thermodynamic limit, which I cannot really probe. So this would be system size dependent, yes. And you might see much more happening, especially at the super solid super fluid transition. Okay, uh, but the general phases will be still uh, the same. Yes, I mean, so you will not obtain any other phase other than these four here. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I don't see any other questions. So I think we can move to the next speaker. <clears throat>